Let's now take a look at the basic anatomy and a little bit of physiology on the eyeball. So the first thing is that the reason why we have an eye is so that we can produce a good picture on the surface of our retina. And so our retina will take up predominantly the posterior portion of the eyeball itself and we'll get to the retina. But first thing we need to be aware of is when we look at the eye anatomically, there's three main layers that you need to be aware of. So we're going to go through these three layers and we're going to start with the outermost layer. So let's write this up. Number one, outermost layer. And let's call it the outermost coat or outer coat. And what the outer coat first of all is there for, so its function is for protection. So you can write outer coat protection. Now, the outer coat is made up of two particular parts. First part is something called the sclera, and the second part is something called the cornea. So the sclera is basically this portion of the eye. That's the sclera. Now, if you want to have a look into the mirror, the white part of your eye, that's what we would term the sclera. So that's what we're referring to here. This makes up, if you look at the surface of the eyeball, the sclera makes up around about 93% of the surface of the eyeball. The cornea is this part of the eyeball here. And that makes up around about 7% of the surface of the eye. So just to uh, put yourself into a frame of reference, this is the anterior aspect, so the front of the eye. This is the posterior aspect, so the back of the eye. And what I just said was that this is the sclera and that this is the cornea. And these are the two parts that make up the outermost portion of the eye. Sclera, cornea. What are they there for? Well, I said, first of all, protection. That's true. The sclera you're going to find is quite smooth. This is important because the sclera is also, also the site of attachment for extraocular muscles. And these extraocular muscles, when they contract, they're going to shift the eye in various directions. So the sclera needs to be smooth. Sclera also has a number of little holes in it for blood vessels as well. It's made up of a type of epithelia. The cornea, well the cornea is made up of about five layers and the outermost layer is also epithelia as well. And the cornea, if you have a look at it, it's transparent. This is different to the sclera which is not transparent, it's opaque. So let's write that down, that the sclera is opaque, which means it's whitish, and the cornea is opaque. Uh, sorry, and the cornea is transparent. Now the question is, why is this the case? Well, the reason is this, because we want to produce an image, and we want to produce a good image, and this occurs when light comes into the eye and hits the retina, or at least the photosensitive parts of the retina, which are the cones and rods, for example, and creates an image. The way this light gets in must be just via the cornea. It can't get in through the sclera because the fact that it's opaque. So because of its color, because it's white, light cannot go through. That's important. But because the cornea is transparent, light can get through. And so it's very specific light coming from a very specific direction getting into the retina. That's very important. When we look at the sclera and the cornea, you'll find that there is an, a part where the cornea becomes the sclera, what we call the corneoscleral junction. Now, you can call, call it the corneoscleral junction. And again, it's this part right here, the corneoscleral junction. I'll just make it a little bit, I'll just highlight a little bit more. There we go, corneoscleral junction, right there. It's also known as the limbus. So the limbus is the corneoscleral junction. And one important point about the limbus is this. I told you that the outermost layer of the five layers of the cornea is epithelia. This epithelia cannot regenerate itself. It can't produce its own cells. 
So there needs to be a stem cell population for epithelia somewhere, and its location is here at the limbus, which means that they produce new epithelia and they migrate across to cover the surface of the cornea. I'll do an entire video on the cornea and those five layers. Okay, so this is the outermost layer, made up of the sclera and the cornea. Let's go to the innermost layer, so number two. So the inner coat. So I said the outer coat was there for protection. The inner coat is there for vascularity and nutritive purposes. So it's there to deliver a blood supply which has oxygen and nutrients available. So we can write, since it's going to be blood vessels, let's use red. Inner coat is vascular and nutritive. And there's three particular parts to the inner layer. The first part that we're going to talk about is called the choroid. Now the choroid covers the inside of the sclera like this. So it covers the inside of the sclera. And what you find is that the choroid, as it moves more anteriorly, it starts to thicken and one. Remember, the choroid is a thin, highly vascular layer. Again, delivering nutrients, delivering oxygen and so forth. As it gets a bit more anterior to the eyeball, it starts to thicken. And as it thickens, what you'll find it starts to thicken and it produces these two thickened portions here called ciliary bodies. So this one here is a ciliary body. Now why do we have a ciliary body? Well, the ciliary body has ligaments attached to it, like little strings, little anchor points. And what these little strings or anchor points do is that they are attached to the lens of the eyeball. So you're going to find that you're going to have all these little strings coming off called ciliary ligaments and they are attached to the lens, okay? Now we aren't done here with the vascular portion which we've got here for the inner coat. We've got the choroid, we've got the ciliary body and the last part is called the iris. Now the iris has another name, that other name is diaphragm. But it is the iris. So the three parts of the innermost layer, you can say, are the choroid, you can say is the ciliary body, or bodies, And then the last part is the iris. Now the iris, what you'll find, well a couple of things. Firstly, the ciliary body has muscles associated with it. And what these muscles do is since they're attached to these ciliary ligaments here, or these suspensory ligaments, which are attached to the lens right here, remember it's the lens that can focus that light. So depending on the strength or the pull, of these uh, ciliary ligaments, which are attached to the ciliary bodies, it changes the shape of the lens, which means if you need to focus light from a further distance or closer, that lens may need to be more concave or that lens needs to be more flattened. And this has to do with the muscles of the ciliary body. But in addition to that, the lens or the diaphragm here can also change its diameter and it's called the diaphragm and it can change its diameter and again, let through only certain amount of light through this gap here. This gap here is called the iris aperture, but is also referred to as the pupil. Iris aperture, also known as pupil. 
Okay, so these are the three different aspects of the inner coat. The third coat, which is called the, sorry, I keep saying inner coat, I meant to say middle coat. I'm so sorry. That's the middle coat. Number three is the inner coat. I do apologize. Obviously, the inner coat is going to be the most inner portion. This is basically the retina. Now, what you're going to find is that the retina is made up of two particular layers. Okay, It's actually made up of more layers, but I'm going to refer to it as the inner layer and outer layer. So the outermost layer is going to be that that's closest to the choroid. And this is called the pigment layer. So we can say outer is pigment layer. And the inner is called the neural layer. Okay, so the pigment layer has pigmentation in it, such as melanin. And what you'll find is that this pigmentation or this pigment layer of the retina goes is attached to that choroid ciliary everybody and lens. So all of these areas are pigmented. Now that's important when it comes to when you look into the eye and you see the dark portion of the pupil, that has to do with the pigment of the iris and of the ciliary body. That's the dark that you are looking at when you're looking in, okay? So this is the pigment layer that I've got here. I'll draw an arrow like this. That's the pigment layer. And then the next layer is the neural layer. And I'm going to draw the neural layer. Now the neural layer does not go all the way to the anterior portion of the eye. It stops around about there. So maybe around about four-fifths of the posterior portion of the eye is where the retina goes to there. This is important because the outer layer, which is the pigment layer, does not contain the photosensitive cells of the eye. The inner layer, which is this neural layer, does contain the photosensitive cells of the eye. So what does that mean? Let's just highlight it. So this neural layer contains the photosensitive cells. Now these are the cells that have rods and cones, for example. I'll do a whole lecture talking about the specifics of rods and cones, but they are what transduce light into electrical energy that we can send to the brain to make sense of what we saw. So the neural layer is what contains the photosensitive cells, not this pigment layer, which means that you've got an area, this anterior area of the eye here, that cannot pick up light. Therefore, it cannot pick up an image and send it to the brain. Now, there's some other parts of the eye that I very quickly want to talk about. First is the two types of humor. Now, that's the fluid that's sitting in the eye. You've got the fluid that sits in the main body of the eye, and that it actually uh, contains the predominant mass for the eyeball. And then there's the fluid that sits in the anterior portion of the eye. Okay, so at the back, all throughout the the main body of the eye, this humor is called the vitreous humor. The vitreous humor. Now what the vitreous humor is, well it's predominantly water with a bit of electrolytes, basically. It's a gelatin, gelatin, jelly-like substance, but it's predominantly water and some electrolytes. If we look anteriorly, you're going to have more humor sitting here, and this is going to be called the aqueous humor. Now, the aqueous humor is actually produced by the cells, the epithelial cells, that sit at the anterior portion of the ciliary body. Okay? And in actual fact, what these cells do when they produce this aqueous humor, they start to move through the posterior chamber and then they move their way to the anterior chamber.
chamber. And what happens is this humor, this aqueous humor needs to be drained, it needs to be drained on a daily basis. And where does it get drained into? It gets drained into this lymphatic vessel that sits around about here. Now this lymphatic vessel should drain this aqueous humor away. If it doesn't, it means that aqueous humor can start to accumulate in this anterior posterior chamber of the eye here. And what that leads to is increased intraocular pressure and this can result in glaucoma, okay? So what have we gone through? We've gone through the three major layers of the eyeball. First layer is the outer layer and that's made up of the sclera, which is the white of the eye, and the cornea, which is the front transparent uh, disc of the eye. Then you've got the middle coat, which is made up of, is the vascular section. It's the nutritive area as well, so it feeds the eyeball. And it's made up of the choroid, which is a thin vascular blood supply. The ciliary bodies, which are a thickened area that produce the aqueous humor and are attached to choroid, um, uh, sorry, ciliary ligaments, which connect to the lens, which help the lens maintain its shape or even change its shape. And we've got the iris as well, which is a diaphragm that can change the aperture diameter, which changes how much light can get into the eyeball itself. The inner coat is the retina, which is made up of many layers, but I've said that there's two major layers you need to be aware of. The innermost layer, which is the pigment layer, this contains melanin, and when we look at the pigment layer as we go to the ciliary bodies and the iris, that's what you see with the darkness of your eyes and the color of your eyes. Uh, and when we look at the neural layer, the neural layer only takes up the majority posterior portion of the eye. And this is the layer that contains the rods and cones that we can pick up light and turn into some form of neural energy. So information that can get to the brain and tell us what we've seen. So that is a quick run through of the basic eyeball anatomy.